morning, everyone. Welcome to Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noel McFoy. This is Scott Ramp. I'm Scott Ramp. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Friday, TGIF. We hope that you guys have had a wonderful week. Mm -hmm. um, and we're here to kick you off until your weekend. I'm so excited because we have a great show for you guys today. We have a couple new programs. We have a new city club. We have um, Wilderness Issues Lecture Series. The um, I think it's part three of a forever ongoing series. Forever. It'll never end. Yep. It's and we have Flagship Friday Yay. featuring a spy movie from C.S. Porter. Did Ooh, you see it yet? No. Okay, uh -uh. good. I can't wait. <laughs> it's a long one. It's a long one? It's like eight minutes. Got it. They always are. Yeah. The and um, we have some city council as well today. Okay. I, I, it's going to be short. I have two quotes from it. Mm -hmm. But of course, if you haven't heard already in the newspaper and all the news, there's, you know, historic preservation. There's been some budding hedge between historic preservation and the people who want to um, demolish the mercantile and build a five story, five -story hotel. hotel. Yeah. Mercantile hotel. Yeah. I don't know what a mercantile hotel It's like It's like a hotel with a bar. It's not going to have a bar, I heard. It's not going to have a bar? I heard, well, so then they would force people go, to go out into the community. Oh, so basically, nothing's better than a hotel that says, hey, we want you to stay here, but we don't want you to stay here. Yeah, just stay here, <laughs> you can sleep here, but you need to go out and get some food somewhere else. I just think it's going to be ugly. Isn't that like the, the whole point of the mercantile is to get people to go to yeah, the mercantile? And yeah. people still didn't go to the mercantile. But regardless of that, now they're building another building that they don't really want people to go to. It's. I think it's just going to be a five-story piece. It's just going to be gross. I just don't think it's going to be very ugly. I think it's going to be ugly. You sound pretty biased there, yo. I am pretty biased. I'm, I'll admit that. Yeah. I'm I'm all for progress. I mean, I'm, I mean... If they're not gonna figure out what they're gonna do with the mercantile, they need to—they need to, they they need need to, do, to something. do something. But like a five-story hotel right on that corner, that's just not gonna look good. It's kind of ridiculous. I'm, I'm a big proponent of progress. Yeah. Like I want something to move forward. But if something's gonna stay empty for X amount of time and there's nobody who's gonna go forward on anything, it kind of seems like it's about time for something to happen. I don't know about this hotel thing because you know, Lord knows, uh, Missoula has plenty of hotels. So in a way. Um, instead of being for or against something, I'm just against everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to be, Scott. Yes, I am just Scott's very stubborn. Just one but way. you don't have to um, not go outside this weekend because um, Saturday it's going to be sunny with a high of 61 degrees. You're going to see some of that early spring temperatures without the rain. Sunday it's going to be a 69 and by Monday you can have a nice sunny Monday. So this weekend it's going to be nice and sunny so head outside but of course today don't go outside because there's a 90% chance of rain to lowering down to a 60% chance of rain. So chances are it's probably going to rain if it hasn't already or if it isn't happening right now. It looks pretty dark outside. It really does. It'll it was wet this soon. morning. It's probably going to be um, the ground's going to be pretty much wet all day. There might be a couple pockets of dry, but other than that, I'm pretty sure it's going to be wet all day. So don't wear your heels in the grass. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's like a, a common courtesy for like all the time. <laughs> Wearing heels in the grass? Because you just don't know. Well, you just sink right through. Your heels just sink uh, yeah. right through the ground. But uh, even if it wasn't raining, you, you'd still sink right through, wouldn't you? Uh, if the ground was wet. It really depends. Cause yeah. Especially really depends during the summer, if it's a like, nice lawn, you yeah. know, people water the lawns all the time. So a lot of times it's like, you know, what's the point of having a lawn? Because you have to water it like 24-7, seems like. I know, it's true. But, well, green lawns look nice. Yeah. But, of course, uh, <laughs> you, you learn more about the weather uh, by logging on to... Uh, uh, I think it's the nationalweatherservice.gov or .org. I'm not entirely sure what it is. Just type in National Weather Service in Google and you'll find it. Yep. Yeah. But you can also find us on the Google. So come and Google us, um, wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. You can also, on the Google, find us on Facebook. And you could totally follow us on Twitter at wakeupmissoula. You can like Missoula Community Access Television on Twitter at MCAT TV Missoula. We're also on Facebook, and if you want to find out more information about us, just go to MCAT.org. And before I jump into new programming, I do have a little announcement that's also on our Facebook page, so I'm going to just read out for you guys. Attention college students and friends and relatives of college students. MCAT seeks two summer AmeriCorps participants to assist us in our upcoming summer camps in media production and media literacy for Missoula area middle school students and some high school students because we have a zombie camp. MCAT wants the summer program to give students a sense of teamwork, accomplishment, and fun in learning. Um, the participants will learn 
rudiments of camera operation, stop animation, and editing from MCAT, the participants will attend three summer training sessions and then participate as an assistant, as, as, as an assistant instructor in seven week long um, Monday through Friday half day summer media camps that are hosted by MCAT for area middle school children. So of course, uh, program benefits, education, and success of completion of service is a twelve hundred dollar value. Oh, twelve hundred dollar value! You don't, you don't. And there's a nice little picture. That's great. I, I I don't like how she's overshadowing the other guy. I do. No, I mean I don't know. <laughs> they it looks good. Who designed that? that looks now it's time for some nitpicking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now let's judge it. Yeah, but of course. Um, I just have to open. Um, so the new program tonight, um, um, the City Club celebrated the uh, Special Olympics, and there's a couple oh, Special great. Olympians that came on and, and spoke in a little panel, and, and it was very awesome. I bet it was sure. sweet. Good. Nice. You know what I'm bummed out I missed yesterday was the movie Paper Tigers. I really oh, wanted yeah. to see it, and I was listening to the radio this morning, and the DJ said that he went and saw it last night, and that it was really inspirational and really awesome. And, you know, I had to work last night, so I wasn't able to see it, but I was just like, I'm going to try to look that up. Yep. That look cool. But hopefully from these programs you can get inspired to be um, talk about wilderness issues or you want to support the Special Olympics through the city. So without further ado, here is new programming happening tonight and Sunday on MCAT Channel 189 and 190. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> That's it tantamount to saying is I have a very low productivity, very, not very worthwhile economic activity that I'd like to, to engage in and it's the only way that I can possibly do it is by you giving me this land for free. Okay. And that's, I think, much of what lies behind this, this movement to move to, for taking over federal land. Um, and it, it, by taking over the movement and say, by taking over the land and saying, now it's going to be available to anybody who wants to com com uh, exploit it commercially. What we're saying is we're not moving resources to their highest and best use. We're moving them to their lowest and worst you use. Here, each of them just realize they're three of 2,374 athletes who participated in Special Olympics Montana last year alone. So they represent uh, their colleagues across the state. So thank you all for being here and willing to share. Hello, my name is Christopher Claren, and I'm, I was I was from Victor, and then um, I graduated. Um, Special Olympics has changed my life, not only physically, but emotionally, because without Special Olympics, I wouldn't be living with them. I wouldn't be living my dream, because everybody has a dream. Oh, uh, melts my heart. That's so sweet. Well, hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, we are here, and I've got some events for your Friday. As always, I kind of start off with like kid events, and then go into things for the parents. Um, but we're starting off at 9 a.m. over at First Presbyterian Church with their rummage sale. So it's going to raise funds for youth and adult mission groups. They've got a huge selection of items. Um, so <laughs> due to a funeral, Friday's hours will be from 9 to 1 and 4 to 6. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, I'm laughing, that's terrible. <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, over at Peaceful Heart Yoga at 9 a.m., we've got parent yoga, yoga for you and your kids. If you don't have a care, if you don't have any, like, child care, or if you want to go to yoga class, uh, you can bring your kids along. So it's only 3 to $10, and it starts at 9. Family fun time is at the Missoula YMCA starting at 9.30. They have uh, lots of activities for children to tire them out. And the nice comfy chairs and couches for adults to sit and chat. I got that song stuck in my head. <laughs> Tiny Tales is at the Missoula Public Library at 10.30. This is for babies ages birth through three years. They sing songs, they hear nursery rhymes, they learn finger plays and hear stories. And then after that, we have family story time. And that's um, for an older crowd and starts at 1030. And um, the, yeah, there's no age limit. And they hear songs and stories and an art activity. Then we have preschool play group over at Roots Acro Sports Center at 11. And this is for ages walking to five years. Um, and they set up different activities and stations around the gym. And then parents and children get to rotate and choose what they want to do. 
over at Spectrum Discovery area. Uh, starting at 11 a.m., their discovery bench is Squishy Circuits, and their brain lab is Eye Dissections. That sounds cool. I want to dissect some stuff. Uh, Taste Buds Kitchen, they've got an ice cream cone workshop, ice cream cone cupcake workshop. What? Wow. Add the cupcake in there, that sounds wild. Yeah, it's a cupcake, and it's like the ice cream cone is like flipped on its, um, on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll do that again, Scott. No, cupcake. So you know, you know how cupcakes, cupcake and cupcakes have frosting? Yes. But it's like, yeah, the ice cream cone, done. Yeah, done. You just put it on and the And it's cupcake. like a little face. It's like somebody with, like, uh, like, uh, you know, those little poof things all around their <laughs> neck. Yeah. You know, and then you just fold it out, and it's good. I love that, Scott. He's a little, a little cake a tear. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so that's at Taste Woods Kitchen. That's at 11, um, and it's only 20 bucks. Is ages 2 to 6, so it's for a younger crowd. And then over at the Missoula Public Library at noon with our homeboy, Rob P., yeah, yeah, yeah. they uh, got from water the, watercolor painting class. From the Robert, from the uh, Witness Protection Agency. Witness Protection Program, Rob P. You can ask, hey, Rob P., why are you in the Witness Protection Program? I was like, I don't know. I saw some people do some stuff. I was yeah. like, oh, I'm sorry. He's like, yeah, you know how it is. <laughs> you know how it is. Just had to relocate. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah, it's I needed a vacation. <laughs> I hated my old life. I'm really glad I got a new one. I, that's the kind of person I would be, is I would go into the witness protection program just so I can get a, get a vacation. Yeah, or go to the witness protection program just like, I feel like doing being someone else. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> sure, we'll, we'll and they, the, protect like, you and relocate. I went up to the FBI and I was just like, hey, uh, do you think I could uh, change my identity and you know be somebody else for like a week or so? Yeah. And they are just like, can I live in Jamaica? Welcome aboard. Sure. You are. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I can know some stuff about what stuff. I was like, okay, stuff, you're, you're yeah. totally in. You already had me at well, yeah. You're, yeah, you already had me at you're, stuff. You're, 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 you already had me at the stuff. first stuff. You had me at the first thing you said. The first thing you, <laughs> you had me at the first stuff, not the second stuff. Mm -hmm. I was already there. Yeah, well, <laughs> apparently, um, if you want to be an FBI agent, you have to have like five years of uh, police officer service, and you have to know at least three languages. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, and you have to have like perfect scores. Oh, wow, that's intense. I always wondered. I was always wondering, like, how do you become an FBI agent or like yeah, a CIA? A, a agent? background in criminology and that kind of thing. Yep, yep. And you have to know. I think it's kind of crazy. You have to know three languages. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure there was a sliding scale right now, but I'm pretty sure that they have to know more than one language. Huh. I'm going to look it up. Yeah. That's okay. what I was told at a high school job fair. I was like, that's hard, and then I walked away. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> 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 All right, we're continuing on with events, everyone. Our rambling <laughs> so always happens. <laughs> oh, we were talking about Rob P, by the way. We were, our homeboy Rob P. Witness Protection <laughs> Program. Okay, but we're moving on. We're going, we're staying at the Missoula Public Library. They've got yarns starting at noon um, for those knitters and crocheters. You can bring your lunch and your project and gossip. Sounds fun. Uh, and then we're staying at the Public Library for Teen Writers Group, which is at 3.30, and that's until 5.30. You know, obviously this is for teens. And it's a give and, good, give and get good feedback. Play with words, eat some chocolate, and keep you out of trouble. Crazy teens. Over at Tense Food Vineyard and Winery, starting at 4, there's a wine tasting and live music by the Kimberly Carlson Trio. And then at the Lifelong Learning Center, they've got an ULA class starting at 5.30. It's a two-hour ULA class, so 5.30 to 7.30. That's a lot. It's a long time. They'll take a short break halfway through the class. Uh, bring plenty of water, your sweat towel, and a athletic shoes. Top Hat Lounge has got their Family Friendly Friday at 6. Lockwood will be playing. And it's also, like I said last week, worst place to take a date. Free Cycles is having a potluck at 6 p.m. It's a community potluck. It's for their Cycles of Change. This is a cam uh, social affair for their campaign. Cam campaign, right? Is that how you say it? Yeah, it's campaign. A campaign. It sounds weird. Uh, but bring yourself in some tasty treats to share. It's like campaign. 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 Like champagne. Like yeah. champagne, campaign. The G is silent. Yeah. I know. I just wasn't saying it right. Yeah, like reading it and saying it are two different things. Yeah. It's ridiculous. English language is ridiculous. It's really hard. Yeah, no wonder people have trouble learning it. Yeah, because there's like one word has like 20 meanings. Uh -huh. Two. Two. You know so what I mean? Four. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean, dog? Two. <laughs> no. What? What? <laughs> I totally do. <laughs> there. There. Okay. There. There. Um, at 
Kathy Noon Club at 6. We've got our Irish music session that is every Friday from 6 to 9. Over at Missoula Brewing Company, Andrea Harcel will be playing the tap room. And at the University of Montana is a planetarium show that starts at 6.30. Their evening, tonight's topics will be exoplanets, other stars, other worlds. <laughs> <laughs> so you can go to umt.edu for more information. Um, www.eventbrite.com is where they sell tickets. Or you can go to uh, hs.umt.edu slash... I don't know. Five five nine nine zero nine. Yeah, like um, their links. Three question mark R E F equals E B T N E B T C K T. Basically, yeah. It's that easy. <laughs> so go, just type in the Planetarium Show at the University of Montana. You'll find the tickets there. You yeah. know what else is hard? This next um, uh, item: cheap date night. Cheap date night. <laughs> <laughs> cheap date night that never exists. What, what <laughs> You know, dating can be complicated, but a cheap date is even worse because it's like, oh, you're cheap on our date. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a cheap date just really secures you're going home alone. Unless she's totally cool with it, and then she's a keeper. Uh-huh. She totally is. <laughs> <laughs> That's God's ideal woman. Yeah. Cheap. cheap and a keeper. <laughs> and easy. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Uh, <laughs> no wonder we're single. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got a couple more events before we switch gears and go over to ASAP segment. So Cheap Date Night is at the Missoula Public Library at 7. Uh, they show a film. Uh, you can call 721-2665 uh, for more information on what that film will be. And then over the Crystal at 8.30 is Missoula's Homegrown Comedy Competition Round 3. And then we've got some music. Uh, Socotra 2016 pre-party is at Monks at 9. That's electronic music. It's a pre-party, and then the real Socotra is going to be at the Wilma at next weekend. And it's just electronic music. It's just a bunch of DJs. So if you're interested in that, I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. It's at Monks. Uh, Head for the Hills and Pert near Sandstone will be at Stage 112 at 9. Uh, Wrinkles, Modern Sons, and more will be at the Real Lounge at 9. Cash for Junkers at the Union Club at 9.30. Nashville 406 at the Sunrise at 9.30, and Shakewell at the Top Hat Lounge at 10. Um, that is what's going on in your community at the moment. Right now, we're switching gears. We're going to ASAP segment. Yeah, before I start, I just want to um, give a happy birthday. Mm -hmm. Today is the 124th birthday of Corey Ten Boom, born in 1892. April 15th. Isn't that something? Wow. Basically her story, she um, she and her sister were held during World War II in Ravenbrook and their Nazi guard killed her sister. Ooh. And so after World War II, the guard went on to become a Christian and he goes up to Corrie Tin Boom and apologizes to her for killing her sister. Mm -hmm. And Corrie had a hard time with that at first and she was finally able to forgive her the man that killed her sister. I just thought I wanted to share that. That's just such a beautiful story on forgiveness. And of course, if you look up Cory Ten Boom, she she was a wonderful lady from Dutch lady. She lived all, like she was almost ninety. Cool. And she did some great things for the world. Nice. Thanks, okay. Lady. Getting to this segment. Before there was Lindsay Wagner playing Jamie Summers. Before there was Lee Majors playing astronaut Colonel Steve Austin. In real life, there was a test pilot named Bruce Peterson. And on May 10th, 1967, Bruce Peterson was flying a lifted body aircraft in real life, the M2-F2. And before the flight went down, he was recorded saying, flight calm, I can't hold her, she's breaking up, she's breaking up. And of course, the plane hit the ground at 250 miles an hour and it tumbled six times for real. He survived that crash, but later lost a, an eye due to an infection. Now, the reason I'm sharing this story about Peterson is because the dialogue based on the communication was used in the opening credits of the show that we're going to talk about. And if you were a boy growing up in the 70s, you watched this show known to the world as the Six Million Dollar Man. So that's kind of the um, prelude. This actual crash actually happened, which launched off this television series. Now let's start with the first video here that we have. This is a scene where Colonel Steve Austin is saving a military base 
and he's saving his boss, Oscar Goodman. And um, these are the bad guys here. They have what's called a microwave thing where it paralyzes people. So Steve Austin is going to destroy this van and keep these bad guys from destroying the military base. And of course, by this time, he has his bionic parts. Oops. And you'll see what he does stopping evil. This is always fun show. Good over evil with good always triumphing. And so his bionic arm is the one... Yeah, his bionic arm is the... He has the power of a bulldozer. And watch what he does. Look at that scene. And of course, the special effects aren't great then <laughs> compared to today. But when you saw this, it looked really real at the time. And of course, bingo! <laughs> <laughs> and he destroys the bad guys on there. So anyway, the premise of this show, very quickly, The Six Million Dollar Man is an American television series about a former astronaut with bionic implants in a fictitious U.S. government organization called the OSI. Now this series was based on the Martin Caden novel called Cyborg. I don't know if you ever heard of that novel or not. Anyway, there were three episodes of The Six Million Dollar Man in 1973 three pilots you might say and from that pilot they started the series which ran from 1974 to 1978 with the actor Lee Majors playing Colonel Steve Austin and of course in that crash like Peterson Austin loses his right arm his two legs and his right eye so when um, when they rebuilt him that's how he became the bionic man and he goes to work for the OSI organization he saves the world and another thing about this series, it was such a hit that um, it's, it's, it had a spinoff called The Bionic Woman with Lindsay Wagner, which ran from 1976 to 78. Now, do we have that second uh, video? Mm -hmm. Let's show that real quick, and I'll conclude this. This crash scene we're about to see is what actually happened to Bruce Peterson in real life, similar to this scene. Flying a jet, just like that. And there it is, the crash. Now my final words about this series, and uh, Noel, this might interest you here. When they, um, when they had the bionic woman with Lindsay Wagner, she was a tennis player, a professional tennis player, and she got involved in a parachute accident so she also lost her two right uh, her two legs and her right arm but instead of losing her eye she left she had her right ear implanted so she could hear oh cool and also this might interest you too when they had some the bionic uh, tennis elbow <laughs> yeah when they had the uh, well she used that too in playing tennis or that's arms, cheap just getting people I know <laughs> but anyway when they had the reunion with the bionic woman she had a showdown with another bionic woman <laughs> Which was Sandra Bullock. <laughs> wait, wait, the Sandra Bullock? Yeah, Sandra Bullock was a bionic woman, but she was she must a been bad a, lady. She must have been really young. She was very young in this series. I, man. That's one of her early works. How old is Sandra Bullock now? She's got to be like She's in, in her, her 50s, I think, yeah. in late 40s. Or well, she, she had to be like 16. She was very young. She was very young, and she was a bionic woman, and she had a showdown oh. with Jamie Summers' uh, character. Of course, she loses. Bullock loses because, you know... The good guys have to win. Yeah. But I just thought I'd share that trivia for those people that, who are interested in Sandra Bullock. They can look her up on the Bionic Woman, the show down <laughs> episode. <laughs> but finally, uh, this was just such a fun science fiction show in the 70s. And mm -hmm. Everybody watched The Six Million Dollar Man and The Bionic Woman, so I'll end it on that. Nice. Thanks, Lisa. Sure. <laughs> that was Musical Notes with Asa Fett and I. We'll be right back after this art clip. Thank you. 
Hi you guys, we're back and I've got some events for your Saturday. So this is what's happening tomorrow morning. Starting at 8 a.m. over at the University of Montana Skaggs Building Lobby, they've got a spring wellness fair. And so this is nice because they've got a bunch of different services and a variety of services. So they have clinical screenings, oral screenings, WIC pediatric screenings, and no WIC, and then pediatric screenings, HIV hepatitis C screening, breast cervical education and mammogram education, children's wellness education, and adult and children vaccinations. Mm. There'll be raffle items, gas cards, gift cards, and more. Yeah, this is put on by the Missoula Urban Indian Health Center. Um, and yeah, it starts at 8 a.m. and it looks like it's gonna be all day. That's great, what a good, what a good thing to do. So if you guys, you know, need some services, you can go there. Uh, oh, this is kind of cool. Over at Sentinel High School, starting at 8 a.m. tomorrow and lasting pretty much all day, they've got a USA Jump Rope Region 12 Championship. So they've got various events to watch. It's free and open to the public with final awards presented mid-afternoon. Cool. Over at the Lifelong Learning Center at 8.30 tomorrow morning, there's an introduction to precious metal clay. So it's a class introduction to precious metal clay that will expose students to several simple techniques uh, while creating at least two pieces of fabulous, fine silver jewelry. All skill levels welcome. Okay, at Big Dipper Ice Cream, they're having a record store day celebration tomorrow at 9 a.m. Um, so you can go over there. Let's see. There I've got a DJ that's going to be spinning some hot tracks. And then you can also go over to um, uh, Ear Candy and buy some records. And then your record purchases can be also be played and then yeah yeah eat um, some ice cream asaf you'd get a kick out of the um, the dj that's gonna be playing you met him before uh dj mad hatter oh yes i remember he has those old really old 19th yeah, the, 19th century uh uh uh, uh edison yeah, I remember recording right. devices I have a really the, 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 he brings a whole was. bunch of those little devices and there's like uh, you know, he, he, he collects old record players. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're like, there's a little spindle, and it's like, I think his oldest one is like over 100 years old. I know, it says on here that he's going to be spinning dicks, di discs of the late 19th and early 20th century. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone, I did not mean that. It's early. I know him too. He's spinning his name discs. Is Doug. Yeah, well, of the late. He's this show. Um, I've got an old uh, Bing Crosby record he won it last year, and he never. Contacted. Oh. oh, really? Yeah, I've got oh. it. It's a 78 record. I've got it waiting for him. Cool. Maybe bring it to the Big Dipper tomorrow. Okay. I can and bring it to him. Yeah. But it says there will be spinning discs from the late 19th and early 20th century. But if you think about it, the 19th century is the 1800s. And the exactly. 20th century is the 1900s. Is he really yeah. going to be. F mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Cool. Well, that's going to be neat. He's an old so, Edison. Thing. Check that out, you guys. That's going to be cool. I'm going to try to check it out. That's at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, there, We've got our Missoula Winter Public Market. Oh, yeah, that's right. Missoula Winter Public Market uh, at the Hive at 10 a.m. And also at 10 a.m. over Free Cycles is our Superhero Bike-a-thon Challenge. And so this is a... Uh, you bike 75 miles, 20 miles, or a fourth mile laps for kids. You can't do it if you're an adult. you got to push yourself. And enjoy a post-challenge barbecue at Free Cycles with live music. Uh, prizes for best costumes in each ride, highest number of pledges, and greatest amount of money raised. Um, yeah, so it looks like they're going to be raising money. I don't know. This is kind of vague. So they're just going to be raising money, and then they're going to be biking around, and then they're going to eat some barbecue. Great. Starts at 10. Over at the University of Montana, they've got a Trout Unlimited UC Montana, University of Montana Volunteer Day. It starts at 10 a.m. So, <coughs> excuse me. The volunteers are going to be planting trees um, and roses and other beneficial plants at Cedar Creek near Superior, Montana. So it lasts all day from 10 to 4. Free food and transportation is provided. Show up at the Forestry Building at 9.50 a.m. Let's see, yeah. So the meet at the University of Montana in front of the Forestry Building between 9.50 and 10.10. Um, and then they're all going to take off and plant some trees. That sounds great. That sounds really fun. Yeah. So that's it. That's tomorrow. That sounds great. And it only lasts till 4. You'll head back to town by 4. Perfect. Uh, over the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation starting at 11 tomorrow, they've got a kids event. And they're learning all about bears from 11 to 1. 
At Traveler, Traveler's Rest State Park, there'll be candle making at a, starting at 11. This is for ages 5 to 10, and it costs only $2. If you want to find out more about them, you can go to travelersrest.org. Over the Confidence Stitch, they're doing a marvelous pillow collage. Starts at 11, um, and so it's going to be making, it's like a collage pattern that makes a small wall hanging or a decorative pillow top. Yep. So you're going to learn the technique of raw edge, fusible applique with floral fabrics, and create a hard bouquet on a base fabric. Reminds That's awesome. Reminds me of sixth grade again. Yeah, right? Uh, so $57 is what it costs, and that is tomorrow at 11. At the Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarium, they've got woodblock printing with Claire Emery that starts at 11 until 1. And she, uh, Claire Emery is an artist, educator, and naturalist, and will share tips and tricks, as well as tales from her adventures in the natural world. Cool. The 39th International Wildlife Film Festival starts this weekend. Starts uh, tomorrow at noon at the Roxy Theater. It happens until the 23rd, so the next four or five days. <coughs> Excuse me. Go to wildlifefilms.org. I gotta take a break. Hang on, everyone. <laughs> I got a little frog in my throat. Okay. So, over at Imagination Brewing Company, they got a Farmer's Expo and Brewery. It starts at Farmer's Expo at the Brewery. So, starting at one at Imagination Brewing Company, you can talk to local farmers from Blue Eyed Dark Farms and Harlequin Produce, as well as a bison rancher. You can talk about local agriculture, sign up for a CSA, and discuss the food and land that connects us all. One thing I do love about Imagination Brewing Company is that they're a really good space to hold events. Like, they do lots of community-oriented events, and I just think that's great. Never been there. I know, I haven't either. Actually, I've never been there. I've driven past there so many times and looked in the window. It's mm -hmm. it's very interesting. It's, like, very uh, low-lit. It is, yeah. It looks like it's big. It's I know, I've never been there either. It's just kind of awkward to get in and out. But they do a lot of really wonderful community but events, so like, every day. there's so many cars that park there. I know. Everyone goes there. But I wonder how people get home. <laughs> <laughs> if I was a police officer, I would just stake I'd out just that stay place. Out. Oh yeah, for oh, sure. Yeah. yeah, that's mm, terrible. Perfect. Stake it out. Perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. Uh, I'll make my quota for tickets. <laughs> you should be a cop, Scott. Yeah, I'm a good narc though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so over at Miso Gymnastics tomorrow at 1 p.m. is the Kids Camp Expo 2016. It's a free event um, where they're going to be showcasing all the kids camps from that'll be over the summer. And MCAT huh? is going to be doing it. And Apparently. I didn't know this, and Scott didn't know this either, until I looked at this event uh, and we were listed as one of the vendors. And I was like, oh my god. Maybe they just kept us on from last year. Yeah, I was like, oh my god, do we have to do this? <laughs> <laughs> so we may or may not be there. We're not sure. I don't know. But also what happens at 1 p.m. tomorrow is our stop motion animation drop-in. Yes. So if you've got a child from age 9 to 13 or a mature 8-year-old or 14-year-old that can hang and isn't too angsty yet, yeah. um, you guys can stop by from 1 to 5 and we do stop motion animation and then when they get burnt out, we do live action. Yep. So we do stop motion for the first two hours from 1 to 3 and then we'll do live action from 3 to 5 and there'll be other kids that don't want to do live action so they'll continue on with stop motion. Only 10 bucks mm -hmm. from 1 to 5. And if you want to come for a half day, it's only five dollars. Yep, and uh, you only have uh, another month after this month to mm -hmm. uh, check it out. Yes, yeah, so we will be doing our last weekend of stop motion animation drop in May twenty eighth. Which is not that technically stop animation; it's more just like a party. Yeah, that's not. Yeah, it's not. It, and if you weren't be... in any of the stop animation um, sessions, you're not invited. Mm, nope. No. Yeah, the uh, prerequisite uh, prerequisite is one. To stop have animation. to come. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, so one more month, and then we've got a month and a half off. No, then we have a month off, and we've got our summer camps. And our summer camps. We get barely a month off. Barely a month. Yeah, because June is our first one. It's like from the 21st to the 25th. It's the last weekend of June, right? Yeah. Yeah. But not to um, correlate with the uh, 4th of July weekend. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be interesting. It's but like that's... we have the first camp, two weeks off, and then we have a stop animation camp. I don't know if we're going to add the bonus camp because then we won't have the gap in between stop animation and then the big zombie one that we're trying to do. Yeah, it'll just be camps on camps. We'll discuss that later. We'll discuss that later. But yes, yeah, so that's one to five tomorrow.
Um, over at the Missoula Public Library, we've got Word Songs, Bringing Poetry to Life. So in the large meeting room, they're going to be talking about, um, it's, it's a Montana Conservationist Program presented by Humanities Montana that is dramatic, high energy, interactive, and an intimate performance of poetry and music um, to, you know, to talk about poetry and to invigorate and rekindle passion and interest for poetry. It's Poetry Month. <laughs> That's from 2 to 3.30. Over at Natural Grocers at 2 p.m., um, they're going to be talking about the power of probiotics. I, and so they're going to be talking about fermented foods and how good fermented foods is good, is how good fermented foods are for you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, over the Ten Spoon Vineyard Winery, they've got Wine Tasting Live Music by Malarkey. It starts at four. And then this next event is like, oh, I wish I could afford to do this. So it's called the Pop-Up Collective. It's at the Top Hat Lounge tomorrow, starting at four. And so what it is, is eight of Missoula's finest boutiques come together at the Top Hat. And there's going to be a bunch of really awesome deals. But for $20, you can go to their VIP hour from 3 to 4 and go in before anyone else and f receive some free stuff and stuff and just shop the stores before anyone else comes in at 4. Okay. Um, and then the main event will be from 4 to 7. So, ladies, yeah. <laughs> I can only name, for like... Sure. So it's gonna one be, or two boutiques. It's gonna be uh, these are some of the boutiques that I've heard of. It's gonna be Betty's Divine, Cloth and Crowns, uh, One Eleven. Um, that's it. I thought it was One Twelve. It's called One Eleven. Stage One Twelve. One Eleven is a boutique. Oh. Yeah. Totally. And so, and then mo more of other little boutiques from around Missoula that you know are usually expensive, but they're gonna have a great deals. Uh, if you pay an extra wow. twenty bucks, you get to go in before anyone else. I know. I'm literally dying over here. Because I don't well, have any it, money. Well, it's <laughs> going to be from, from 4 do. to 7 p.m. You don't have to be there at 4. But, of course, all the best pickings will probably be gone by then. Yeah. Like, I envisioned myself going in at 3 $20. You, you envision yourself, like, sticking out at, in the morning and yeah. just staying in line. It's like, what are you doing? It's like, oh. Mm, I just want to shop. I just want to shop. Yes. Do, do, do that face again. I just want to shop. I just want to shop. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I just want to shop till I drop. <laughs> But I have to Reasonable pay my prices. rent. Rent, shopping, I miscalculated rent. my face on your camera. I know. Get your face out of my camera. <laughs> it was just my ear. That's okay. You can get his ear in there. <laughs> the whole face, and I'm my, not uh, having it. And part of my shirt. No. Right there. Mm -mm. Oh, there's my shoulder. You can't even see it. I'm looking at the TV. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hurry you're right. up. Hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> okay, so over at the Hive, they've got their skate club Missoula, and it's inside the Hive. And so they're going to be having some lessons, or you can just skate around, or you can just hang out. It starts at 5. So the five, all ages skate is from 5 to 7.30. Ages 10 and up skate is from 8 to 10.30. Yeah. All right, we've got Diversity Day at the Missoula Senior Center tomorrow at 6, as those adorable little ladies came and told us earlier this week. Um, and so they've got a lot of things, uh, a lot of kids' programs. Kids are going to be putting on some cool, uh, you know, presentations. And then we've Skits, got... Skits, videos, yeah. um, performances. Mm -hmm. They have a DJ playing there. Yep. Last year they had Supa Man, yeah. who was featured artist on MTV. Yep. Oh, so yeah, it's going to yeah. be uh, pretty big. It's all about diversity and celebrating the diversity that lives in our city of Missoula. Which is pretty much white people and Native Americans. <laughs> How's it going, Asa? <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting to hear that. <laughs> I'm just kidding, you guys. Don't, yeah. take it, don't take this seriously. I don't. <clears throat> yeah. So, over at Lolo Creek Brewing Company, Crashers are playing the tap room at 6. That you can take seriously. <laughs> <laughs> And then over at community, um, over at Martha Jane's Uptown Dance, starting at 6.30, is a community swing dance. Um, and so if you want to bring your partner along or want to do something that you've never done before, you can so go to the swing dance. So if you want to dance. swing your partner round and round. Round and round. Only $7 per person. Uh, over the press box, they've got a Comedy Outliers a stand-up comedy showcase. So this is put on by uh, UM Psychology Club and Laugh for a Change Comedy. I don't know really. <laughs> I don't know. I have no, I have All no I know idea. is it's not being put on by John Howard. Yeah, no. So it's only five bucks at the door. Um, it's going to go back to UM Psychology's participation in Relay for Life. So come on out and laugh for a change. 
Okay, then, then we've got some music events. Country Line is going to be the Sunrise Saloon at 9. Absolutely with Chris Moon is going to be at the Badlander at 9. Universal Choke Sign, Undone, Articus, and Endeavor. Endeavor? Oh, they're going to be at the Dark Horse at 9. Oh. Russ Nasset and Le Revelators in the Union Club at 9.30. Marshall McLean Band, Mama Doll, and Bart Budwig are going to be at Top Hat Lounge at 10. And uh, that metal band called Endeavor, it's kind of funny because there's a uh, homeschool children's program called Endeavor. Called Endeavor, too. So you I know, wonder. It's, a, it's like a. Um... Uh, it's like a school co-op. They should homeschool co-op. They should have the metal band you know that Endeavor else? Endeavor come to Endeavor to play music with them. That would be awesome. Endeavor could be like the singing choir in the band. Yeah. Like there's always that, that soft mel melodic part in a heavy metal song. Yeah. And they're like singing. Oh, da, da, da. Yeah. And then he's. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, much. that's exactly what the music is a lot of times. <laughs> As always, you guys can find out events from MissoulaEvents.net, the University of Montana website, mm -hmm. the Missoulian, and the Independent. But of course, it is time to move on to our next Ooh. segment, Public Works Committee. Um, uh, Wednesday morning, uh, John Angan speaks on the ordinance for the, uh, the uh, it's the um, ordinance that reflects the mountain water um, transition from a uh, private utility into a public utility. And there, and of course, if you haven't already heard, there was a bunch of common and a bunch of backlash from the uh, mountain water saying that it's like, hey guys, if you put this ordinance into effect, you're gonna charge um, anybody, all residents of Missoula, um, if they do break any kind of, if they miss fees or whatever like that, mm -hmm. the ordinance will basically make people get a ticket, which is like 20 bucks a day, up into $200 a day if they don't, uh, of misdemeanors. Yeah. It's crazy. That is So, crazy. of course, they brought it back to committee, and this is what um, John Engen um, speaks as a reflection of what um, that meeting on Monday was about. Uh, in wastewater and move forward, our intention here is to create a baseline through this ordinance for operations. There is lots of work to do in terms of how we continue to operate this utility, but we need a place to start, and that's what this ordinance is all about, is a place to start. Um, I will tell you that um, we have long maintained that there are um, some sound policies and practices happening at Mountain Water, and those that we adopt are a function of um, acknowledging that. Um, what we have always maintained is that the uh, current owners um, have not made investment in the company, and that has resulted in uh, a ton of deferred maintenance, and that is a problem for the community, and that's what this lawsuit was about, as well as the fact that that water is essential to human life and ought to be in the public domain rather than investor owned. Um, with regard to rates, uh, we're adopting those rates simply because a we don't want to create uh, we don't want to create additional uh, 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 stress on staff um, or the folks we serve as a function of the transition. Uh, and uh, while we have certainly criticized uh, rates in the past, part of that criticism has been that those rates were used to line the pockets of investors somewhere far away and not used to reinvest in the system. Um, that's what we're going to use the rates for. We'll, we'll pay employees, we'll operate the system, and we'll improve it. That's what those rates go to. All right, so that's basically um, what the ordinance, what he's trying to do for baseline. And, of course, um, this is... This next quote is Director of Public Works, who will be kind of running the new uh, Mountain Water Company, is um, John Wilson, and he responds to all the comments that he heard on on, when, on, on Monday for the City Council meeting. Uh, a, a number of things came up that I think were uh, very good. I, th I think it was unfortunate that uh, a number of things were misrepresented in the sense of very minor infractions and maximum penalties. Um, you know, I come from a small town where we manage these systems, and you obviously don't treat your customers with disrespect or criminalize, and that's, that's a given in this business. Uh, I think you all know that, but it was hard to hear those things uh, the other night. Um, and, and all the staff here feels that way, too. As, as Mountain Water employees become city employees, uh, they'll, they'll continue that uh, good customer service work they've always done. Um, particularly uh, th things that... Um, uh, are not in their rules that they expressed, and, I, and I'm, I'm glad. Uh, it's not fun, but the process works. Uh, provisions such as the watershed trespass, uh, that has a purpose. Uh, you want to protect your watershed, uh, but obviously it's written in a way that's uh, not the best. 
and uh, we're looking at some other communities to see if there's uh, better language to bring in or just to leave that aside for now until we have time to uh, update the ordinance over time. But the language is, is there now, uh, at the very least, should be removed. Um, uh, All right. So um, with the constant adjusting and um, basically to wrap up this meeting is that they talked about um, little details about some of the public comment that was brought up from the uh, Mountain Water employees and the president of Mountain Water. Basically, a lot of people who represent Mountain Water came to that meeting on Monday mm -hmm. and were just like, this ordinance is terrible, it's awful, makes uh, residents uh, criminals and all that stuff. And now they're going to do some major updates for the next couple of weeks. But of course, it's a lot harder to... Um, work for a uh, better ordinance for the mountain water company when the water com mountain water company is and um the word i'm trying to look for is um litigation they're in mm -hmm. litigation and they're not allowed to like converse so mm -hmm. it's really hard to come up with an ordinance when with a water company that you can't talk to yeah for real so How that's that that's happen? basically what it's at right now it's just like a lot of times it's like oh um you know we want to write this ordinance and um but now we can't really revise it to its full potential. So they're mm -hmm. going to keep on talking about it for a while, and it seems as though they probably should. Honestly, they probably should wait. It kind of feels like they're um, a lot of time they're just kind of like um, tiptoeing around this process f for a while until yeah. they get a solid, um, until the Supreme Court, which is happening next Friday, um, that's a week from today. They're, we're going to hopefully MCAT's going to try to live stream it. Don't take my word for it because we're having some issues with live streaming, um, but we're going to hopefully live stream it. It's going to start at 8.30 a.m. And, and probably by our morning show, I, I can hope to cut into it and just kind of see what's going on because these cool. are going to be the opening statements, and it's only going to go for like an hour and a half, and it'll be on our um, website, um, MCAT.org, via local live. Perfect. But before I jump into the Flagship Friday, I just do want to do a little quick thing about parks and conservation, and let's talk a little bit about the urban tree population. As you may know, that the ever forever aging trees that are in Missoula are living creatures they are, they may not move they may they may only grow absorb sunlight uh, produce oxygen but of course with anything that is is alive it will die and at, at this point the things that are in the, the trees that are planted especially in the university district are past the their lifespan Mm. So now, um, they, and this has been going on literally the last 10 years. The, they've been past their lifespan for the last 10 years. So the city um, is looking through a process, and this is their one-year update, discussing the progress of implementing the strategies list on what they can do with the management of the urban forest. So this is basically how it works. Um, you can either pay. Uh, the homeowner has to pay with a permit. They pay all for all the costs to like get, take care of the trees and make sure that the tree is like, okay, the tree's cool. And then there's the other one where, you know, the, the homeowners can share the cost for about $200. Mm -hmm. Then of course they can get on a uh, planting um, queue with no cost, but you'd be on a two to three year waiting list. So it's like, it's, it's either whether you want to be proactive or maybe take the risk of a tree falling on the roof. So mm -hmm. it's, it's either you want to pay for that tree to be trimmed and be safe for you, or you pay for the roof that it cl uh, collapses on or the neighbor, your neighbor's roof. Cause yeah. you are responsible for the tree that's um, on your, your property. Yard, yeah. It's a public right away. It's like the same thing with the, the sidewalk that's in front of your house. You have to shovel it or you get a ticket. Yep. Yep. But that's basically what happened for some city council, and of course they're talking some more historic preservation. And of course, if you haven't read the newspaper today, they talked pretty heavily about um, how the, much, uh, there's a lot of bias going around. There's a lot of people saying this and that. There's a lot of being Missoula is very passionate about the Missoula Mercantile, mm -hmm. and that's um, that's just the way it was. And we'll be talking a little bit more about this. And of course, the meeting last night was a, a little over three hours. Yep. But of course, I do want to move on to the last little bit because this is a fairly long video and this is a flagship Friday featuring the kids at CS Porter. So without further ado, here is Spy Movie from CS Porter. Is it? What are you talking about? I know you know what it is. Where is it? Is what? <laughs> ah! Ah! 
I want all the information now. What are you talking about? I don't know what you guys are talking about. Leave me alone! Quit your yapping. I know you have it. What? what? I don't... Oh. Take care of her. I have some unfinished business to attend to. So, what do you like to do for fun? Stuff. Um, that, okay. You just made the biggest mistake of your life. <gasps> You. That's a lot to take in. Don't you know what I've been through? I know what you've been through, Elizabeth. How do you know my name? I've been tracking you down ever since you bought that bracelet. This old thing? I've had this forever. I got it at a thrift store. Who owned the thrift store? How do I don't I don't know it's a thrift store? Hey. Ah! Whoa, look at the gift box. Ugh, who is this? More spies? Can, what's so special about this stupid bracelet anyway? This is Claire Fairchild. She has a safe house and she's trying to protect you too. Does it look like she could protect me from that thing? Don't worry, I got a guy. Oh, what's up, Crystal? What's up? How's it going? You know, spy stuff. For the twelfth time, I have told you, we are going to stay here until it's safe. That's why they call it a safe house. Ugh, I wish it wasn't so boring. <gasps> Yay, I mean, ah! Do something! Uh, uh... Why'd you do that? Um, I'm a double agent. double-crossed us. she is look I don't know where she is I don't call the shots here you're gonna have to talk to my boss then where's your boss then huh look I don't know where they are or what they're doing they only give me rendezvous points where's the next rendezvous point uh, uh, I'll tell you hmm late on time. Who are you? I'm Agent Crystal and I'm here to interrogate you. Good luck with that. <laughs> I want to know where she is. You may have defeated me, <laughs> but I'm eating someone here. What? 
Oh, where am I? Why is it so dark in here? Someone help! No one can hear your screams. Agent Crystal's gonna come for me, and you'll get yours. <laughs> Sir! <laughs> what? Boss, Agent Crystal attacked me, but I got away and I didn't tell her anything, I swear. Maybe these death plans will come Wait. in handy. Shh. Hear that? What's that? Oh yeah. We did it! Is that a tracking device? They've been tracking you. They know our location. Hold on. How dare you! Oh, oh my gosh, that was I that. didn't know! I swear! You have failed me for the last time, servant. I knew they would come for me. You didn't believe me. They always come. Shut up! Nobody can get through my defenses. I'll be the judge of that. Well, well, well. Look who we have here. It's Crystal. Where's your little pet, huh? Well, psh, not this mission. And what do you want with Elizabeth anyway? The bracelet? No, it's not the bracelet. It's what's inside it. What's inside that dumb bracelet anyway? Inside the bracelet, there's microfilm. Inside the microfilm, nuclear codes. You're a monster! No, I'm not. I'm an evil scientist, boy man! Man boy? <laughs> oh yeah, while you were talking, I got myself undone! Alright, so there's that. Was that was great! Movie. Good job, little kids! That was from C.S. Porter. Yes, they did a good is. job. I love you that. Been so we. Bionic girl, that, that kid with that punch. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good punch in. But you can um, you can punch in by um, logging on by punching these letters into uh, your web browser, wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice we made you write it out twice, we made you punch it out twice. Um, you can <laughs> like us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. You can check out Missoula Community Access Television on Twitter. You can also like us on Facebook. And to find out more information about MCAT, go to MCAT.org. Yep, come join us uh, this Saturday for our Stop Animation drop-in aged uh, 9 to 13 ten dollars for a drop-in uh, five dollars for a half day it's just great and wonderful and uh, be sure to check us all all of us out and all of our endeavors and after school programs with flagship I just want to thank everyone um, for joining me on this wonderful Friday <laughs> morning and enjoy the weekend so for Wake Up Missoula I'm Scott Ramp and for Wake Up Missoula my name is Noel McAvoy here's Asaph Adonai and we'll see you all Monday mm -hmm.